Look, I, I'm here, I have a hot chocolate, a croissant. <laughs> I'm happy to be here, guys. If there was the possibility for me to stay in F2 one more year, I'm not sure. The main issue is that the F2 champion needs to have an F1 seat. I'm the third one in a row to not be in F1 the next year. Right now, if you were in an F1 car and it was the same car Oscar was in, do you think you could beat? I would beat him. You would? Of course. Of course, of course this car. Tayo Porsche, you did the pit stop fastest lap in a 1.05. Ladies and gents, welcome back to Pit Stop once again. It is it is easily the earliest we've ever <laughs> yeah. done a podcast. But worth it, because we have a mega guest with us today. We do. Ladies and gentlemen, your Formula 2 champion, Theo Porsche. Let's go! <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. It's good. It's good. It's a bit early, as you said, but mate, I, I will. I won't lie. We did. Who was it? Mark Priestley at eleven thirty a.m. And that felt like the crack of dawn. But we can't. I mean, I've rolled out of bed ten minutes ago, but we can't complain because you've been up since like five a.m. Uh, since five, exactly. Yeah, it's been a early wake up, but. Uh, I, I'm used to it, you know, I'm used to it, so it's fine. Good man. We appreciate you flying into London just to do the interview, That's so you're flying straight out after. Yeah, sure, sure, no, it's good, I mean, uh, I'm happy to be here, first first ever podcast for me, so... Let's go. Let's go. It's good, It's uh, I needed to do it, so uh, yeah, it's good, and uh, yeah, happy to be here, as I said. What a time to be doing your first ever podcast off the back of Formula 2 champion, how are you feeling right now about that? Uh, it's, it's amazing, for sure, I mean... Uh, it's been a very very long season and um, my goal was to win the the championship for sure and now to be the the formula 2 champion it's it feels amazing because i mean formula 2 is like the last step before f1 the level is really really high and uh, yeah just i mean i'm an f2 champion i did it so now <laughs> i just you know i'm just happy how sick is it to say that you've done it because not a lot of people win it you know sure sure i mean it's uh, it's a really, really tough championship. You know, I've been competing in, in this uh, series since uh, three years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it was tough, you know, the first two seasons. And I was t I was fighting for the championship. But, uh, you know, to win it, it's something special yeah. uh, in the last race of the year. Um, I mean, it's, it was crazy. So I'm super happy. And also to do it with AIT Grand Prix, you know, mm -hmm. it's a great, great, uh, great story together. So great end to our story. I can't believe we've actually got the third F2 champion here because we've had Mate, the last three now. The leaderboard's really starting to heat up. Mm. Like there's a lot of pressure on you. I was just saying to you before you showed up, you know, Oscar was our first guest and he had no one else to beat apart from me and him. But now you've got a lot of competition on your hands. Sure, sure. There are some amazing names there and uh, it looks good. I are mean, you good on the sim? <laughs> yeah, I can't, uh, on the sim, I, to be honest, I don't. <laughs> I don't have a sim at home. Do you uh, not? No, I. I mean, I drive in the simulator with Sauber like yeah. uh, 100 days a year. So <laughs> when I go back home, and you know, I just want to play Call of Duty or uh, FIFA <laughs> yeah, okay. or uh, GTA, you know. Yeah, but let's go. <laughs> no sim racing. You're excited so, for the new GTA then? You have seen sure. the trailer? Oh, for sure, for oh, sure. It looks I'm amazing. really excited. I was in Japan actually for the for the Super Formula test, and uh, there was the trailer. I mean, uh, I was in the train going to Suzuka, and I was like, I watched the trailer <laughs> like ten times. I'm, yeah, man, it's okay. I will uh, for sure buy the game straight away. But anyway. we it's quite scary because we figured out we're gonna be like thirty by the time that it comes out. Like old, yeah, old man vibe. But you 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 were like twenty, no? When the GTA Five came out, or yeah, 18. Been, yeah. 18, 18, eighteen, yeah, eighteen, yeah. No, I know, yeah. 18. How old would you have been? I uh, was under 18. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was not legal to, me to play GTA 5, but it's okay. It's, it's all right. We'll it's let you all right. Up. I mustn't forget, it's Christmas. Oh, yeah. So I thought we'd make today's episode a little bit more special. He's killed it. He's killed I've it. got a little something Good. here. A little something. Let me just open the bag. Uh, product placement. Yeah. Sponsor us, please, Starbucks. To be fair, Starbucks, this is your one chance to get it right, all right? We've all got a lovely hot chocolate. Oh, uh, hot perfect. chocolat. Yeah, should yeah. I say? Oh, 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 chocolat. Oh, oh, oh. chocolat. <laughs> Bonjour. I'll let you unwrap it. They're all Ooh, from Starbucks. Va, va, boom. That's nice. A la, la croissant. Croissant. Good, good. <laughs> this is the so good. Thank you. Croissant. That's the perfect breakfast. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Just a little snack. But what do you have to do with it? Is a, you have to. Exactly. You, you put it in the hot chocolate a little bit. 
and you'll hate it. Mm. It's, it's okay. perfect. I do mm. like the way they wrap them like this, actually. <laughs> you do? Mm. It almost feels like a present. Well, I just know it's clean. You're struggling a bit there, Tao. Are you good? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Drives an F2 car at hundreds of miles an <laughs> yeah, hour. Not, car. not super uh, <laughs> good at uh, unwrapping Starbucks uh, cool. or chocolate. Why don't we all dunk it at the same we'll time? We'll all have a dunk at the same time. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm so glad this is your first experience of coming on a pod. Yeah, so. sure, sure. It's I like nice. I like I'm it. not sure every podcast is going to be like this that you do. Yes, probably not. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> but this is nice. I, look, I, I'm here. I have a hot chocolate, a croissant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to be here, yes. But you've got to rate it. So this is probably going to taste like absolute garbage. <laughs> it's not going to be like what they got in France. To be honest, look, it's a little bit yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, not <very laughs> it's not the best it's right it's like in the state of it. Yeah, <laughs> is it not the but best it's okay, guys. Is it, should we have a I've took a bit off. All right, let's do it. Let's, let's go. go. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Cheers. Merry Christmas. Oh, mine's very oh. soggy. Oh. Mmm. Huh. Yes. <laughs> It's not for? as good <laughs> no. as a croissant in Paris, guys. This this is, where the hell? <laughs> but this is the worst thing I've ever tasted. <laughs> <laughs> this croissant is not really good. I have to admit it. It tastes like a pillow. A pillow? Like it tastes like what I would sleep with on my bed. Well, the hot chocolate is good. Yeah, the chocolate's okay. A nice one. So this is interesting because it takes me on to my next question, which we were just talking about off camera. I offered you a drink, then you said I'd just have water. You didn't want squash or like anything sweet. And so your diet is obviously like mad strict throughout the year. And then, you know, does it get to Christmas and you kind of chill out a bit and you eat what you want? And Yeah, I mean, you know, it's um, it's strict for sure during the, the season. Uh, not very, very strict. I mean, it's not like, a, I don't know, I'm not uh, doing a f f soccer or, you know, like basketball mm -hmm. or, but I need to be careful with my weight for sure mm. uh, because I'm, I'm tall as well you know I'm really tall compared you are to really tall mm -hmm. how tall are you six six one six two uh, six two I think six two mm. uh, one uh, one ninety uh, centimeters so uh -huh. you know it's um, yeah I'm tall and I need to be careful with the weight because for sure uh, I already just can fit in the car if I'm a little bit too <laughs> too big <laughs> your head's flapping around <laughs> exactly <laughs> I can go play another sport for sure, but uh, no, it's um, yeah, it's important. And uh, during the off season, as I said, you know, I like to just enjoy a bit more. Uh, have a hot chocolate with a croissant every morning, <laughs> <laughs> or uh, or you know, like yeah, just um, chill a bit for like two weeks, you know, minimum two weeks, and uh, and then go back straight into the physical prep and yeah. As soon as you won the championship, what was the party like? Because we saw the, we saw the scenes on TV question. and you were, was, you were buzzing and the team were, were buzzing was, as well. Yeah, crazy one, crazy one. And, you know, uh, I think we, we, we enjoyed a lot. Uh, first in the garage. Yeah. Um, and I, I, we were partying a lot. And I was, they turned on the TV in the garage and I was like, oh, they already did 10 laps, the Formula One drivers. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh really? Wait, I don't care about the races. Okay, we continue <laughs> the party, guys. And uh, yeah, it was, was cool. And uh, yeah, I mean, I was driving in F1 on Tuesday, just after the, the race. But um, to be honest, I yeah, we, we, we were in the nightclub after the race, just enjoying <laughs> a lot. Uh, I mean, we, we won the, the three championships, rookie teams and drivers championships. Oh, so wow. Everybody was uh, really, you know, they wanted to party a lot, the mechanics and engineers. So yeah. it was fun. Yeah, that's a really special. Was that in Abu Dhabi? What are the clubs like out there? It's it's not amazing to be honest. Really? <laughs> no, it, it's better in Europe. I feel like the the parties are a lot better in mm. in Europe. So I never partied in I mean in uh, London in England. You've never been out in London? Never. We will. Ooh, yeah, yeah. We we'll will. Get <laughs> okay. We we'll get Next out. time I come back, we 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 can party. But yeah, uh, yeah in um, yeah Paris or you know Monaco is fun as well. So wow, it, it was okay. It was okay. But Monaco's an interesting night out I'm we haven't done it yet to 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 do I've never even been yeah it's crazy I mean Monaco is I think also my home track uh, almost I don't live in Monaco but I live near Monaco so yeah for me it's a uh, very special and to to yeah win in Monaco it's even more special when you are young like this you know uh, it's a dream it's a mm. dream uh, for every racing driver the track looks you know unreal for when you drive there for the first time yeah, you go on the on the track and it looks unreal. You, you're like, wow, mm. that's crazy. Yeah. It's Monaco, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, all the buildings, the boats, the sea. 
or the fans are really close to the track and the track is very difficult and there there are so many legendary corners and yeah I mean, monaco is special so i saw you talking on an interview before f3 and you were saying that you you didn't really like street tracks that you would you would crash or you would struggle sure. on street tracks and stuff like that people spend their whole life trying to just win that race you know and you've done it at 17 years old 16 16 Se- 17, 17 17 17 i'm the youngest ever race winner in f3 and f2 because uh, Lando had it before, right? And you, you, exactly. you took it off him. Yeah, yeah. Lando was the, the youngest race winner b- before me. So wow. hey, it feels special for sure. And to do it in Monaco, as I said, you know, it's the best place possible. Wow. Yeah, in my second race weekend in Formula 2. So, mm. I mean, it was, it was a crazy weekend. And everything happened so, so quick. And uh, yeah, that was, that was great. Because it was like a home race. Did you have friends and family come and watch you sure. for that? Wow. A lot of friends, a lot of uh, family. And uh, actually, I think there, there was the, um, a big flag uh, in the uh, grandstand. I think it was after the the, sh- the swimming pool. No, just before the swimming pool chicane. There was like a big uh, Theo Porsche flag. <laughs> and I know the guy who did it is a really uh, a good friend of mine. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> It was crazy. I mean, there was. Uh, <laughs> it's all. I mean, there's only almost only French people in the grandstand in Monaco because it's really close yeah. to France and pff, it's like a, my home race. So it's great. I think your F3 season is a special one because we had Oscar on. But was it three points? Three points. Yeah. And so I, you came second to Oscar Piastri in a crazy F3 year, and then there's three points between first and second. My question for you is: looking back on that season now and racing it, you've raced against Oscar for a period of time. Right now, if you were in an F1 car and it was the same car Oscar was in, do you think you could beat him? I would beat him. <laughs> you would? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Of course, Oscar. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, he's, um, he's an exceptional racing driver to me because, I mean, he won the um, uh, Freca, then F3, and then F2 straight away yeah. in his um, rookie season for the F3 and F2. So. I mean, he's a, he's a really tal- very, very talented dri- dri- driver. And um, in F1, I think he was matching Lendo a few times this year. Uh, oh, he won for sure, a, for sure yeah, he was, yeah. Exactly, and he, he won a sprint race. Um, so, I mean, he's re- a really good driver. So, of course, I think, you know, I don't know. It's tough to say it like this, but uh, <laughs> I think I can, I, I believe I'm, a, I'm on this, I'm a, on him, on mm. his level, sorry, on mm. his level, you know, so I can probably, if I have my chance to drive in F1, show my potential, you know, yeah. I think I already, you know, I'm a F3 vice champion, only three points behind him, youngest ever race winner there, same in F2, uh, champion now in F2, I just need an opportunity to, to get to F1 and I will give my best for sure, uh, but you know, it's, uh, it's tough to say it, if I I'm yeah. able to beat him or not, you know. Well, you can prove it today, mate, on the sim, because all the cars are the same, so I'm, you can't even blame it on the car. I'm scared of this simulator. I'm looking <laughs> at this simulator since uh, t- since I arrived and I see the lap times. I don't know, <laughs> but it looks good. It looks good. I find it interesting because you've raced against so many of these people, but also you're so you're a year younger than Oscar, or two years younger than Oscar. I think two, yeah, two. Two so or three, two or three. I think um, Oscar is like from 2000 or something like that. How old are you now? I'm 20. 20. Yeah, you've always been really young in the series you're in. Yeah, sure. I was almost every time the youngest. Um, so that's not easy. That was not easy. I mean, I struggled a lot of times in Formula 4, F3 or my first two F2 seasons because I was lacking a lot of you know experience. And uh, also I was really young and, you know, I had um, uh, I was struggling a bit to communicate with the with the older people mm-hmm. you know in my team to express myself and to you know so I learned a lot in F2. Um, I think it was a good choice in the end to do a, th- a, th- a third season in F2, um, not because I won, but also because you know I improved uh, myself a lot you know as a as a person but also as a racing driver. So mm. you know um, yeah and. I was, I think, again, the, one of the, the six, six youngest again this, this year in F2. So I, I'm That's really crazy. young, so yeah. Man, I'm just looking at your neck. Sorry, mate. I'm just, <laughs> it's, just <laughs> like, it's massive, isn't it? Like they've always got giant necks. And I didn't train the neck since uh, two weeks. So. Really? Oh, you're yeah. still flexing those. It's looking good. <laughs> and now we've had the big announcement next season, Super Formula. Congrats for that. Let's, yeah, have, a, let's have a clap. Thank you very much.
Thank this you. is an interesting one for us because we didn't really know much about Super Formula. Sure. But then obviously, you know, it's come to light recently because Liam Lawson stepped out of Super Formula to take uh, Ricardo's seat for a bit. So, yeah, what's the mindset behind that? We want to know kind of why you're why you're doing that. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm doing I'm doing this because for sure I don't have an opportunity in, in F1, mm. um, and I feel like Super Formula is a great. I think it's the best. It was the best option to me uh after f2 i had opportunities to go to indycar indycar is a great championship as well i like indycar a lot i think who in, wanted you in, sorry who wanted you in indycar yeah i mean but which team uh, <laughs> you can't say, you can't say, you can't say. <laughs> uh, it's um indycar is a great championship it's a lot more popular in europe i feel like um in europe we even in france where are, we are able to see indycar uh, on tv Super Formula, it's impossible to watch mm. Super Formula. It's really, you know, Japanese championship, but yeah. the car is, is much quicker. Um, it's quicker than F2. It's very close to F1 in the high speed corners. There is also a power steering, which is close to F1. Um, in terms of, of you know, uh, power, it's close to F2. You have, you have no power steering in F2, right? So no that would be different for you. Crazy, crazy different. Mm. It's, uh, I mean, it's, the, the, the opposite to drive, it feels really different. And um, you know, the, the power steering feels like when you have a car with a lot of downforce, as soon as you touch the steering wheel, the car is turning really quick. And mm. F2, you have like to, to force a lot, like the steering wheel is really, mm. really hard. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's uh, on that side, it's very different. And um, yeah, as I said, Super Formula is a great championship. Um, Liam drove there. Uh, this year and um, he did some really good uh, races um, when he jumped in the F1 car you know he was matching Tsunoda uh, he yeah. scored points in, in Singapore which is crazy uh, in uh, Alpha Tauri uh, Alpha Tauri was not so good this yeah, year amazing. So, mm. I mean it, it proved that I think the, the Super Formula is great for um, for uh, for F2 drivers you know uh, when they cannot race in F2 anymore mm. just to prepare the drivers to, to F1. So. I imagine if you do an IndyCar you know if you are still like a reserve driver or for an F1 team or whatever it's hard to just dip out of that championship exactly. to go to F1 if you had to. Sure and yeah I mean it's um, IndyCar takes a lot more time you know as you say you know it's like there is a lot more races compared to Super Formula. Super mm. Formula, I think it's about seven race weekends, seven, eight race weekends, which is which is okay. And there is every time like a month or two months between the races, yeah. which is which mm. is good. So I, I'm able to come back to Europe, uh, do a lot of simulator, and um, yeah, go on the F1 races as well with the team to, you know, in case they need me. Of course, I need mm. to be ready to to jump in the F1. So ca how often can you be at an F1 race? Like someone like Felipe obviously goes to, to every race, you know, exactly. so you won't be able to do that. I don't think so. Not every race, uh, but um, I will try to, I think, for the European races to stay at the simulator. If there is a, a need to, to replace a, a driver, I can take the, the plane and I'm maximum two hours away from uh, every European uh, mm, track. Yeah. So this is good. And for the, the, the other races, the overseas races, I think I'm probably going to uh, to most of uh, all the, the F1 races. Oh, cool. Like, uh, I don't know, in Bahrain, Jeddah, Melbourne, I think the first first half of the year I will uh, travel a lot. It's definitely the right move for you, I think, because it means, you. well, like Fab said, you're still going to be driving. It's very similar to F1. But also, being 20, you probably don't just want to sit around for a year in, a, in, a, in the paddock, in the garage, and not do anything right. You'd rather be driving. Sure, sure. For me, it's, it was really important to be able to, to drive, to do something. Um, Felipe is doing, for example, he's doing a lot of uh, private tests uh, with Aston Martin, which was uh, another option also for me. But um, Sauber uh, didn't have the possibility to, to, to have a, a car to do private tests and to rent also an engine. It costs a lot of money. It's much more expensive than a, a Super Formula season. So in the end, this was not possible. IndyCar, not not very good. And uh, Super Formula, mm. not a lot of races, really quick car. Uh, championship level is really high. The, I mean, Japanese drivers, uh, they are really quick. They know the tracks really well. And uh, the it's I think it can be a great experience to me as well, you know, just to, you know, see something else out of Europe, out for of sure, uh, for sure. so it's it's great. We love F two. Like this season, arguably, it's been better than F one. Like it's been an amazing F two season. And I just wonder, 
from your point of view, do you think it's a bit of a shame that like you have F2 champions go and win the championship and then there's almost like, it's like a dead end. It's like, well, now I have to like leave the path I'm on. Whereas I, I look at it and I'm like, it's a shame the progression isn't working better. You'd think, I would think you win F2, you get an F1 seat. Sure. That's sure. like how any other league if there's of not available, would though, work. What would you do? Well, that's it. You were saying but this stay was where, in F2. Yeah, I thought from a F2 champion's point of view, if the offer was there to stay in F2, and would you want to stay in F2? If there was the possibility for me to stay in F2 one more year, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if it was uh, if if it's a possibility, you know, to do a fourth season uh, as a champion. I guess I kind of just thought maybe in the future, if sure. they did make it so you could stay in F2 unless you had an F1 seat, F2 would then end up with just all the amazing winners in it. So it would actually sure. become a really, really good... Well, it is a great series now. Sure, sure. I, I agree. I it's agree. just a shame there's nowhere for people to go. I mean, sure. like you say yeah. about Dragovic, we see Dragovic in the paddock and it's a shame. Like He's yeah. desperate to be in oh, the Oh, he's, he's desperate. The same as sure. you. And you see, I mean, and we had the same conversation with Oscar, you know, it's like, how did you feel during that time of doing nothing? And they all ha hated it because you don't really know if you are going to get a seat afterwards. So. Sure. Yeah, I think, I think the, the main issue is that the FT champion probably needs to have a, an F1 seat. For me, I think it, they need to find a solution. I mean, you cannot force any Formula One team to choose one driver and you cannot tell them, you know, uh, he's F2 champion. You have to, to take him or, I don't know, you don't mm. do the season. I don't know. It's it's impossible to, to say that. But, uh, I mean, the, the F2 champion, I think it can bring something to, to F1, you know. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you win F2, you have, I think, the level to drive in F1 for sure. Uh, I mean, we saw it with Oscar, we, we saw it with Felipe um, during the FP1 sessions. It was really quick. He's ready to, 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 jump, to jump in F1. But uh, yeah, um, to be honest, I, I don't know. We, mm. we need to find a solution because mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the third one in a row to, to not be in F1 the, mm. the next year. So mm. I guess it's all about timing, isn't it? It's all about timing. And, you know, it's uh, also, I don't know, you need to be lucky. I don't know uh, if someone... Uh, retires from F1, you can take his seat or, you know, it's like, it's all about that, you know. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, at the end of the 2024 year, I think a season, there, there will be, uh, I think, 14 drivers yeah, out of contract. A few so, gaps. So this is, ah, this is the opportunity. I see. So you've had a few conversations with someone. And now I know that you're pretty close with Fred Vasseur because of the Sauber <laughs> connection. Now he's gone to Ferrari. That would be the dream, to go straight to Ferrari. <laughs> well, we, we hear a little something about maybe Carlos Sainz might not have some sort of seat at some point. If if Ferrari has a as a as a seat for me, I'm I'm here. <laughs> I'm free. I'm free, guys. I'm ready to give everything. That would be cool. Just to step straight into a Ferrari. That's the dream. That's the dream. I think for every racing driver, you know, uh, to drive for Ferrari, it's uh, it's amazing. It's um, you know wh when you walk in the F1 paddock, even if it's not your favorite team, you see Ferrari. You know the red the red car, mm. the, the red suits, red garage. Everyone in red it looks it looks amazing and. Uh, mm. Yeah, Ferrari is the dream for sure. Have you been an F1 fan your whole life? You've always loved F1. Sure, sure. Since the since day one, because my dad, my dad was a big, big fan of most. He was a big fan of rally, um, but he, he used to like also F1 a lot. And um, yeah, he, he. I mean, I remember going to the Monaco Grand Prix uh, when I was three years old. I have pictures also <laughs> on my phone. I have pictures and of me wearing the Ferrari shirts. Uh, me too, from Silverstone. Exactly. When I was a, about eight years old. <laughs> and uh, I was, I was rooting. Apparently, I was rooting for Michael Schumacher for sure. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> he was the, sure. he was the, the best driver at the time. I mean. They were, he was fighting with Alonso and mm. Alonso was winning the, the championship. But, uh, you know, the red cars, just seeing the red car when you are a kid driving in, in Monaco with the loud engine sounds, it was was crazy. can't believe that. You've seen that as a kid at three years old and then you've won there. Exactly. Now, mm. Yeah, of course. That is nuts. <laughs> so what does your dad think of all this? Like, he must be like, my, my he must go down the pub and tell his mates, my son <laughs> won <laughs> Monaco last week. And they're all like, no, he didn't. Yeah, he's... <laughs> I think he's proud, he's proud because in his uh, office, there's all my helmets, race suits, oh, trophies, cool. Cool, cool. and uh, he, he's proud for sure, he's really proud. But uh, I think he, he wants me to also to reach my dreams and, uh, you know, he's like, he's like me, you know, now we, we just want F2, but now he wants me to, to get to F1, do everything mm. to, to go to F1 because, um, yeah, it's, um, it's my dream, but it's also, 
you know, the dream of, uh, of my family. So yeah. Nice. I'm okay. just going to hit that yeah, dishwasher. Yeah, the dishwasher off once, once again. again. we've left the dishwasher on while doing Aye. a podcast with a racing driver. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I wanted to, to bring back your, your dad because we were talking about him a bit. And this is like, it's always a weird subject, but I, uh, I think like, people at home would want to know. Um, because you have a lot of variation in motorsport. You have a lot of people who come from wealthy background, you know, who can afford to to know, ha- have a seat year upon year. And some people who are, who really struggle, you know, we had Brad Benavides on, you know, Brad, and he was talking about the struggles they've had financially. So what has it been like for you and your family growing up and being able to afford this crazy thing that you do? Yeah, I mean, um, motorsport, I think it's super, super expensive. I think everyone knows it for sure, but it's it's crazy. Like, and, and uh, at the beginning, it's, it's okay, I mean, it's a very expensive go kart is already very expensive but then when you go to f4 f3 f2 now you see okay that's crazy like uh, the season is really expensive but then you have to buy all the flights all the hotels uh, rental cars you mm. have to eat uh, at the restaurant or some uh, i mean any, you have to eat something you know on the mm-hmm. racetrack and on the weekends i mean it costs a lot a lot of money yeah. but um you know i was I think I was lucky that uh, my dad could help me a lot um, in go kart and Formula Four. Then from F3, it was really expensive, so I had the the chance to be uh, with the Sauber Academy. Um, so they were helping me a lot uh, from F3, but also my three F2 seasons, especially the the last one. The last one, it was I mean. My, my dad couldn't do anything else. I mean, he couldn't uh, help me anymore. Mm. Uh, just maybe just, you know, buy some flight tickets and mm. some hotels, but not all. Get yourself a Kit Kat or something. Exactly. Like that. <laughs> That's what my dad would be like. <laughs> exactly. Just, it's okay. You can buy, you can, tonight you will hit a Kit Kat with a cola. That's it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I mean, he could, um, no, he could, he could help me uh, quite a lot at the, at the very beginning. Mm. Uh, but now, as I said, I'm very lucky to be with the, with Sauber, uh, especially for the financial support. Also, the the French Federation helped me a lot. Um, what's what's that? The, the French. F- yeah, what's that? It. I mean, in France, we have um, like it's called the the French team, and they. I think each year there is like four drivers from F4 to F2, mm. or even Super Formula. They are going to help me again next year because as soon as you step in F1. They don't help you anymore, which is which is logic. But uh, mm-hmm. uh, Super Formula is considered as a like a Formula Two series, so yeah. uh, they will continue to help me. So there is like four drivers, and they uh, give budget to the to the four drivers. So which is really really good. Mm-hmm. It's not a lot a lot of budget, but it's <coughs> decent amount to help a lot the drivers. So yeah, well, F two C is like two million, right? It's a lot. I mean, there's there's no. It's not like a fixed price, you know. It depends a lot on the on the drivers, on the teams. But um, I think nowadays it's yeah around in between two and three million. Something. Three million quid, I would be set for life. Yeah, I'd yeah. settle down. Sure. sure, I'd have about four dogs. <laughs> and just in, a, in this apartment, <laughs> yeah. we've spoken so, about it, but we travelled too much. But we were thinking we've had a little dog running about. It'd be quite nice. <laughs> it's good. It's good for sure. I, I like dogs a lot. I have two, two dogs. Well, what would you have? Yeah, uh, golden retrievers. Oh my it's god, it's amazing, amazing. I love, I love dogs. It's, it's good to, I mean, to have dogs when I come back from the races, mm. even from a really tough weekend. You know, scored zero points, crashed the car. And I come back home. I come back home, and uh, uh, there is the two dogs really happy to see me. They you still know, just, love you. Exactly. They don't care about the points. They it's, still love you. Exactly. That's very important. Yeah. When I come back home, just to disconnect a bit from motorsports and uh, mm. to you know recharge the batteries. So yeah, it's good. Nice. So you're gonna be moving to Japan? No, I will be just going there for the races and okay. uh, some some uh, test as well i think there is like pre-season test and uh, mid-season test in in fuji as well so i will be just going there for uh, for the races and uh, yeah it's gonna be a lot of travel a lot of jet lag next year but i'm i'm ready for it so are they all in japan all the races all the races in japan and how many circuits are there i think it's like uh twice suzuka twice fuji and then there's autopolis uh, sugo and motegi Wow. So 
Yeah, I don't really know the tracks to be honest, apart from Fuji and Suzuka. <laughs> a bit Motegi because I watch MotoGP, so oh, do you? I, oh, <laughs> so cool. for sure I know a little bit the track, but uh, Autopolis and Sugo, I don't know. This is an interesting question, and because I was going to ask you, has it been? I know for like the media side of things, F two following F one and doing all the same circuits. You're, you guys are on TV, which is great that you follow that, but uh, I like the smaller tracks better suited to F two. Like, do you wish in F2 you were doing smaller circuits which suit the car better or is it is that not the case? Well, I don't, I don't really know. Like, um, uh, the, I think the the F2 calendar is not too bad. I think I, I would I would like to have like more uh, races in America probably like Austin. That would be great for the Formula 2 uh, car because there is a long straight line, great overtaking possibilities. Mm. But tracks like <laughs> For example, uh, Barcelona is, I like Barcelona a lot. I mean, because we, we drive there a lot when we are in F4, F3, and mm. it's a great track, but for the races, like it's a bit boring to be honest. So mm. yeah, more, um, I would like to have uh, more tracks like, like this, you know, uh, Austin or uh, even Mexico, you know, Mexico is like, I mean, I don't know the track very well because this year in FP1 mm. I did like probably two outlaps and that, that's it. But mm. uh, it looks it looks like um, a good track for the race. Oh, in the F1 test, yeah, you didn't get any time, no. did you? No, what? That was sad. Yeah, what happened there? I think it was a brake by wire uh, failure. So how does that feel to like you've obviously waited all year to get in an F1 car? Exactly, and, and for that not to happen. I was I was uh, so disappointed because I was I mean I prepared myself like it was a Formula Two race you know mm -hmm. a very important Formula Two race just for probably 15 laps you know 15 or 20 laps uh, an FP1 so um, I jump in the car I drive uh, we go out of the box and then uh, I touch the brakes and there's like a sound in my ears an alarm on the dashboard like break by way of failure and then i feel like there's no, no brakes no brakes the car is not braking anymore and i was like uh, guys i think there's an issue okay <laughs> box box still the problem and we tried like uh, five times to, to to change everything we changed oh, the steering man. wheel they changed something in the software change the stereo yes the uh, st steering wheel oh, the stereo. Yeah, that, that. <laughs> put a new stereo in it change the song maybe that will help <laughs> that would be good yeah, i would like to have uh, some music in the car yeah possibly. i was gonna say i mean it's yeah, for sure it can happen. You know, it's motorsport, but uh, yeah. Um, unfortunately, it's happened at the worst time possible. You know, mm, FP1. That must be so annoying. Yeah. Are you uh, quite technically clued up with the car itself? So do you know what they're doing when they're changing all the stuff on the car, or are they just doing stuff and you're just like, okay, yeah, I'll exactly. try this. Yeah, they just do it and they just tell me we're gonna we are going to try again and we go out same issue again. It changed something. I don't know what I don't know what what what, what they are doing. So yeah, it's uh, but it's uh, you know as I said, it can happen. Yeah, so it can it's happen. okay. But uh, yeah, just going to Mexico <laughs> for for this, it's yeah. uh, it's part of the re of the reserve driver role. Unfortunately, it's uh, yeah. it's like this. No, it's amazing that what you did with Salba. It's amazing that Salba picked you up and they've been there throughout this part of your career. How did that happen? Like, was there a mo how did Salba find you? Um, I think it was back in uh, Formula 4 uh, in 2019 in when I did the German F4 championship. Uh, at first, it was called the Sauber Junior Team. So uh, it was um, linked with Charles, Charles Racing. Um, and I was driving with the US Racing Team. It was uh, like Charles, but in F4 uh, in Germany. And so, yeah, they um, I won the championship there. Oh, this was the 17 out of 21 wins? Um, no. 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 Ah, this was in the French F4. Ah. Rookie. Uh, yeah, Another rookie junior series. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Epic, yeah, that was. Uh, I won everything there. <laughs> Almost everything. <Yeah. laughs> I couldn't believe that. You were so young as well. Exactly. I was, I think, the yeah, the, again, the youngest for sure. But uh, I was like 15. Yeah, 15. And how old were the other people you were racing? How old was like, the oldest person? The oldest one? I think there was one guy. Uh, he was like 25. Something like that. That must be awful. I'm 27. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember. I don't think he's making F1. No, no. <laughs> you know what? He was uh, doing uh, jet ski. Jet ski, yeah. Yeah. Uh, jet ski racing. I don't know. And uh, he decided to to do an F4 season. And he was there. But he's, oh, he no, was that's, nice. That's cool then. He that's just cool, hopped yeah. up a jet ski. Sure, sure. He enjoyed a lot. He enjoyed a lot. But yeah, I mean, it's cool. You know, when uh, it's fun as well. You know, when you're 15 years old, racing with the like guys that are 20 or 25 years old 
it's not easy because I was, I mean, still really, really young and lacking yep. a lot of experience. And but it's it's good. It's great it's memories. You're just so young, like 14, 15, 16. Like I think I was like, you're a kid, aren't you? Really, you yeah. don't have all the life experience. Exactly. You don't know how to communicate with people as well. Exactly. Yeah. So that would have been a massive thing in your career. You're, you're still you're 20. You're so young. Sure. Sure. Exactly. That's uh, and. I mean, it's good now. I don't regret anything because that's great experience, you know, to to be that young mm. in the middle of uh, really. Of, I mean, it's very competitive, uh, you know, uh, sport, and everyone wants to to beat uh, all the other drivers, you know. Though, so it's it's not easy, but uh, it's fun. When I think about it now, I learned <coughs> a lot, and um, it's great, and uh, that's why also. I'm better today and I hope I will learn again and be better in the future. So yeah, mm. that's good. As your results show this season, you're consistent. Like exactly. you're able to continue picking up points, race in, race out. I sure. think that's one thing a lot of people lack. So yeah. it's quite a good thing to have. Mm. Yeah, sure. And uh, during my first two F2 seasons, I was really quick and I won races. I did pole positions, but it was like this, you know, it was one yeah. weekend good, one weekend bad. So this year I really wanted to win the championship and to win the championship, I knew I needed to just be consistent. Mm -hmm. And I started very well in Bahrain with for sure crazy pole position and the race win by 20 seconds. And after that, Jeddah was terrible, zero points. So I was yeah, like- Yeah, there was something that happened at Jeddah, which we'll, we'll speak sure, about. Yeah. Something quite big actually <laughs> involved see, with someone I that we I see the name of one of the drivers involved. Yeah, yeah one of your someone rivals. Someone got wiped. <laughs> when, uh, we, we saw at the Formula 2 prize giving, they, sh you know, they did a little film of the season. Yeah. And it was, so Bahrain, round one, Theo Porsche winning the race like this. And then round two, sprint race. <laughs> crazy move, crazy move <laughs> by well, the champion. Mate, I've got, we've got some clips that we're gonna, we'll, we'll play to you and show you. Sure. But before we get into that, the notice you're wearing quite a nice watch. It's a nice one. Yeah, yeah. So we had JM Correa on the pod and he was sure. wearing a cool watch. It was like a custom watch for part of his race team. Sure. Do you mind if we show everyone yeah, what sure, you're sure. wearing? I'll, I've got one as well, so I'll sure. you show you mine. Yeah, you've got a Swatch Omega. Yeah, you've got a brand new watch, yeah. <laughs> you want Someone. me to? So it's like it's called a moon swatch. That's the Mercury one. I think it's not on time. Oh, that's why you were late. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's really nice. Mm, look at that. Yeah, that's a nice one. That's a very nice watch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll film it later and, and we'll show, and we'll show yeah, it. We'll but yeah, it's really nice, man. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, we so we got a couple. I put a couple of clips together of uh, pretty much throughout this year. It's only like three or four clips, but yeah. we wanted to play them back to you. And then you can just talk about it and kind of how you felt at the opinion, time. Yeah. Sure, sure. Anything else? All right, so <laughs> this one is just a really cool overtake that you did. I'm sure you remember it. Jack sure. Doohan, Spain. Sure. In the rain, mate. Very Alonso-esque, i got to say. Exactly. It, was, yeah. it reminded me a lot of Alonso. I you watched know, it. You know what? I, I, um, I mean, Alonso inspired me a lot for the race starts and the overtakes. Really? To be honest. And uh, it's, it's not my favorite driver, you know, but uh, I really like the way, you know, when he was with, especially when he was with Ferrari, you can see a lot of race starts from Alonso, mm -hmm. like, great starts and then he overtakes like one car two cars yeah. it goes right right left yeah, and yeah. he's like playing with the other drivers and yeah. that's what my manager told me look at alonso and it when you do the race starts you feel like you are in a in a video game you know you just enjoy and you just play with the others you know and uh, uh yeah I, I mean inspired me a lot so he's great at it and wow. he's still still good 42 years old still uh, nah, still killing it <laughs> and he's still, got a few more years left. yeah man. stick him in a red bull mate and he's he'll win a championship i think he is he, for sure he can challenge max let's watch this this is pretty cool have you seen this uh yeah I mean that's epic, and then he kind of comes back, and then you're just straight around the outside, mate. In the in the rain, what are you on intermediates there? Yeah, it's yeah. like uh, no in F2, it's like the wet tires. We don't have oh. intermediate. It's wet or uh, slick tires. Mm -hmm. so. But it's that was a great move because I mean it was like after a few laps, I think after already good 10 or 12 laps, and we the car was moving a lot, the track was drying out. So when the track is drying out a little bit with the like uh yeah old old wet tires it's not really good i mean the cars feels really like a boat moving a lot yeah. and mm. and to yeah go around the outside like this if you push a little bit too much you go in You're the gravel wrong, yeah. so See you later. that was logan sergeant style 
You don't want to be doing that. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> is it, what's, what's going through your mind? Because the thing I love about F2 is that you obviously don't know, but on TV, they show how fast your heart's beating. Yeah. And it, I've noticed that it's always before the overtake. Sure. And then mm. by the time that the overtake, you're even side by side, the heart rate drops a lot. So, sure. and imagine in the rain, you must be thumping. Oh, like, for oh. sure. For sure. A lot. Sometimes like even in, on the quality lap or if you have a little uh, oversteer snap, you know, in the high speed corners, like <laughs> the heart is like this, you feel it. Do you but like driving in the rain? Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's really cool. I, to be honest, I like both like dry uh, conditions and wet conditions, but uh, I mean, when the car is is really good, <laughs> what condition is is nice, and uh, when you are confident as well, it's it's nice. You know, when you you feel like you can break late, you can push a lot, mm. and you you dominate the car. You know, which is it's a, a really that. great feeling. Dominate the car. Mm. Yeah, exactly. That is something a champion would say. It's great. Very true. Yeah, it's my great. car dominates me most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Next clip. <Your> broken. <laughs> so this. Now I believe this is the Oli Berman clip. Okay. Um, we saw what happened live. You know, we're good, we, we like Ollie. He's sure, sure. <laughs> I like him too. He's a friend, like he's a friend too. of ours. <laughs> that, that's the thing. I have nothing against him, but I don't know what... Uh, I don't know. Let's just run the clip. I, I saw what you were doing before we play it. I saw what you were trying because it had worked a few laps before, hadn't it? Exactly. Twice. Yeah, you made that move. Twice, exactly. Mm. I did it like I was really confident on the brakes. Like, and bam, I was overconfident, you know, for uh, two seconds, you know, in my mind. And, uh, probably not even two seconds. Yeah, like probably not even a two seconds. It's just like a fraction you know just overconfident i was right behind um victor martens my, my teammate and so he had drs i had drs as well big steep stream from five cars in front of yeah. uh, of us so uh, we were like really quick and in formula 2 in the races as well you need to drop the front wing level it's uh, by regulation you have a bit less downforce than in the qualifying uh, session really so which makes the car a bit more unstable and quicker in the straight for sure. So there was everything to, you know, <laughs> remind me to break a bit earlier, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but I was overconfident. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I went for it, but uh, yeah. Let's watch it. Wow. What have we Way too quick, think? way, way too quick. <laughs> way too. Uh, you know what? As soon as I saw that I was going to, to, to crash into Oli, I was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's okay, I take the blame. I was like, even in the car, still like this, uh, sliding a lot, it was really quick and it, I mean, I was not scared of uh, injuring myself or because I knew it was, yeah. for me it was going to be okay. Mm. For Oli, I was a bit more uh, scared and I was like, I hope he's okay, yeah. I hope, you know, I take the blame, I take the penalty, it's too late and I was not even uh, super hungry at myself, I was like, it's okay, now it's done, I need to move on, straight away. So that, to be honest, I, if this was happening like uh, in my first F2 season, I would have probably like uh, smashed the steering wheel, like cry, cried <laughs> in the radio, yeah. I don't know. But now it's okay, you know, I feel yeah. I was okay. This is a good angle actually from uh, Victor Mines. Exactly. So you can really see how just you just, you, come you, in you on the didn't left. give a damn, straight down the inside. <laughs> <laughs> You can just see where you didn't break it early enough. Crazy. I love it because it reminds me of racing him on, yeah. on the sim. <laughs> really? There's a yeah. gap. If I see a gap, exactly. I'm, I'm going up the, the gap. The gap was questionable. Plus it was, we, the door was half closed. We play the F1 game with no damage on, though. The cars don't get damaged. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So I can just push you. On the F1 game, you can do it. I promise you. But there, it's a little bit more expensive. <laughs> a little bit more dangerous as well. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. And that's, uh, yeah. I saw it when you got out of the car that you were straight over to Ollie straight, and you, so yeah. I, that was the first thing I, I did. I was like, as I said, I was not even super angry because it's the second race of the year, second race weekend of the year. Uh, okay, I did the mistake. It's like this, we move on. Yeah, it and happens. Yeah, it happens, it happens. Was he pissed off? Oli. Oli, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but even, <laughs> it's okay. Even the, the team Prema, they were a little bit angry, but it's okay. I can understand. I can understand. Well, yeah, if, I get it. <laughs> for sure, for sure. But it's it's okay then. It was okay. So. This next one's really interesting because, I mean, it's obviously not your fault. Ah, yeah. And this was, was mega because we had Pietro Fittipaldi on the pod. <clears throat> sure. And he was telling us about Enzo and how this happened and like the aftermath and like, you know, his in injuries and stuff like that. And sure. This is a really tough one, I think, for both of you, but let's run the clip. It's just some fan footage. So your car clearly doesn't, Crazy. just doesn't go. And, ah, oh, that's mental. 
Yeah, that's that's crazy. That was, I, I think for sure the biggest impact of uh, of my career, because I think it, it was in the end it was 72 uh, G's, oh. 72 b between the two cars. You know, the first impact. 72. And you would never pull that around a corner or any. I think no, it's uh, no, that's it's, a lot. It's crazy. 72. It's like a lot, a lot. And uh, yeah, <laughs> just to, I mean, I remember just the last thing I remember is seeing Enzo right behind me like this i see all the cars going right yeah. left right left and the last one i see enzo just right behind me and i close i was i think i closed my eyes and i had my hands on the steering wheel and the last thing after that that i remember is just standing like uh facing the pit wall in the car feeling okay i mean uh, for sure i feel like my back is is completely uh I don't know towards the seat like it's a bit of a strange feeling but uh, yeah and i and i want to talk on the radio to the engineer but i don't have the steering wheel anymore oh just the steering wheel was completely broken out of the car wow. there was still the quick uh, quick release you know quick release on the on the steering column but the steering wheel was completely broken out of the car and oh i was God. like can I talk? <laughs> Can I talk? That's crazy to me because when I watched it, the the safety car goes over to Enzo. Yeah. And not you. And so I thought, you know, no one's come to you because you've radioed in and said I'm fine. But no, because you it's couldn't. um I just there was the medical car, they saw me, I just did a thumb thumbs up like uh, this, but they uh told me to stay in the car, to not move. And uh yeah, then there was uh, I think it's uh yeah uh Jan Roberts, um uh, doctor of the, the FIA, he came to me, he just told me like, okay, I'm going to move to remove the helmet if you want, if you feel okay, but stay in the car. They did the classic procedure, I went to the hospital and yeah, that's... And were you okay? I was uh, the day after, uh, so it was a back-to-back -back race with uh, Abu Dhabi and um, I was not sure if I was going to race in Abu Dhabi because uh the day after in the airport uh i was with my dad and, and my mom came to that race mm. that's crazy like she 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 doesn't like that she oh, what, like, she doesn't like watching you race so no, she doesn't I mean, normally i come. mean she supports me she, oh yeah loves it but it's scary right exactly so scary for her and she came to to that race you know oh, to jeddah like i was oh, like no, <laughs> no. no. You should, i mean that's the worst was the uh, race to to come because i mean you you don't know what's going to happen but uh yeah, that weekend, I mean, the, the big crash at the start like this, it looks scary because... That's awful, yeah. Exactly, you see the crash, there's the red flag, and then there's no information, no uh, TV footage Nothing. of the drivers. So, you know, for the parents, it's it's terrible. So, uh, so yeah, the day after I was in the airport and I could barely breathe. I was like, wow. breathing, struggling. Both of my knees hurting a lot oh. because of the steering wheel. I think with the, the impact, you know, with my hands and both both knees um, in the steering wheel, so I broke the steering wheel with the with the knees, which is uh, which is crazy. And oh, that's uh, how you broke the steering. I think so. I think so because both <laughs> knees, I was like walking, but it was yeah, like you had the fucking talk back button still lodged in <laughs> exactly. your knee. <laughs> exactly, I was crazy. You got a clutch like that <laughs> in somewhere. Exactly. Oh, crazy, crazy, and uh, yeah, and uh, also you know the yeah the the headache. You know, I had so mm. much headache and. Uh, Oh, pff, crazy and i went to abu dhabi and uh, i had uh, like uh, i needed to go to the medical center for them to clear me to race in the end it was okay i felt i felt better just the the friday of abu dhabi like the friday morning everything was better the knees uh, everything like the headache was not there anymore yeah so that was good that was good that's amazing we got one more clip and this one is just a special one we all know it sure um but I just want you to watch it back and then just say, just tell us how you felt. I mean, it's pretty obvious, but. <laughs> Emotional. I, guys, to be honest, I don't like seeing myself like this. But it's okay. I'm That's happy. why I wanted to play it. <laughs> I'm happy, but <laughs> I know what you like, mean. I'm the crying. same when people play it back to me. I, yeah. Crying like a baby in the helmet. I can't. I remember. I <laughs> I couldn't speak. Like I was trying to speak, but I was crying so much. <laughs> it's it's good. But it's mad because you you clearly see through your words how much that that meant to you. How yeah. it, you obviously saw it coming. I mean, the battle with with Vesti was was obviously ongoing throughout the year. But there comes a point where you think you're probably going to get it but then it's not until you actually get it. How does it feel to, to, to cross that finish line and know that you're the champion? 
it was i think it was an amazing feeling like the best best for sure the best moment of my career um so far and yeah amazing like when my engineer told me you are the new f2 champion um it's i mean i knew i was in a good position you know in the last five yeah. laps i knew i was in a good position to win to win the championship but you are not sure you are not 100 percent sure until you cross the line until it's official because it's super important like it's your you are here fighting for the f2 championship and yeah I, as soon as i crossed the line i saw all the mechanics on the pit wall and i yeah my engineer told me you're the new f2 champion i just you know like cried <laughs> just cried just cried and screamed in the radio then after <laughs> I, I was so happy and yeah it's amazing amazing i love the clip when you get out of the car and you stand on top of it and it looks like you'd rehearse this sure. how do you rehearse this because he was in the mirror the car, before the race oh, stand oh, on the top guys. of the car and you're like <laughs> no. staring down i'm like that's been rehearsed <laughs> I, I was i was really happy i wanted to yeah to be able to enjoy this moment i was thinking about this moment for a long time because i mean you know it's part of the the celebration as well and you know this is what you get when when you win uh, yeah. when you finally win a, a great championship like like this and uh, and i to see all the mechanics the engineers the my manager my family you know just in front of my car it That's was incredible amazing. incredible incredible that's unbelievable yeah being the f2 champion now who do you think wins f2 next year hey that's a tough one because i think there's a, a lot of uh, good contenders to win this championship um i think i would go with with my teammate of this year victor yeah, yeah. uh, first because uh, i think he's is really quick um and yeah he's you know he has a good experience as well now um he's a little bit older than me so he knows how to you know be to manage to manage the formula to championship to manage you know to be a team leader now i think it, it can be so yeah uh, victor oli oli berman yeah. for sure mm -hmm. uh kimi antonelli that's uh, i think a good okay. surprise to see him in f2 yeah but uh, he's really quick he's with prema as well so when you are with prema you can can fight for the title and uh, i think there's a uh, also dennis auger you know dennis is will he will be in his third season with mp I mean, uh, you, you've had a few battles with Dennis, haven't you? Sure, sure. In F4, in mm -hmm. F3 a little bit as well. And uh, during two, two seasons in F2. I mean, he's a, he's a great driver, F3 champion. And I think he, he will be there. He will be there as well. No, F Fred Vesti? In there, maybe. Fred is not driving next year. No. Is he not? No, no. <laughs> oh, shit. Where's he going? I think he's uh, only doing a simulator for, for Mercedes. Has he announced driver. that? Sorry? Has, has he announced that online? Do people I know that? Yeah, I think he, 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 he's still the reserve driver. I think he's still with Mercedes, so oh, I, I, I assume that, that he will still be... See, either we haven't noticed it or that's an exclusive. <laughs> really? I don't really know. I've no idea. No, no idea. <laughs> Tell me, where, where is he racing? This <laughs> no <year>? idea. <laughs> I think I think I think he's not racing. Unfortunately <laughs> for him, yeah. Oh, that's a shame. That's yeah, a shame. Like, like Jack Doohan, you know, is still a reserve driver, but nothing else i think so if i was a racing driver i'd be the same as you i'd want to race yeah. i wouldn't want to have a year out and not sure. do anything that's uh, super important and to keep uh also that um, that momentum uh, for me it, w it was important you know I'm, I'm an f2 champion i think i can still fight for uh, race wins or maybe the championship in, in japan um and yeah you know it's good for uh, all the f1 teams also to see my performance and uh to for them to see like you know I mean, maybe yeah. the, this guy is ready to to jump in an F1 car. Maybe he can uh, help us get some points, or I don't know. You know, that's what yeah. I'm trying to to do. Well, before you jump in an F1 car, mate, you got to complete the pit stop fastest lap yep. for a start. I know you got Super Formula coming up, but that honestly isn't shit compared to this. Because <laughs> look at the names on this board. Um, where do you, where do you? I mean, you're obviously hoping you're going to come top, but you didn't seem I mega have a confident. Yeah. Can I, there is like a warm up lap or no? Yeah. Oh yeah, bro. You can get, you know, three, ah. or, three or four practice laps. You can ah, practice laps to figure amazing. out, get comfortable with oh, the sim. For sure, for and then sure. you set three laps, we take the quickest one. 
crazy. That's perfect. Oh, yeah, we can put perfect. brake assist on if you if you need that. Racing line if you need it. <laughs> okay, okay, no problem. We Let's will not it. say it to the camera, but it's no. okay. <laughs> okay. Let's, Let's do the lap. There you go. Tayo Porche, F2 world champion on the pit stop fastest lap. This has got to be the most competitive thing you've done in your life. Yeah, ever. I, I take it very seriously. The TV's a little bit. Uh, <laughs> the TV's, yeah, slightly. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm okay to, to go to, to quality. Oh, you've only, how many laps have you done? Uh, three. Three? You, you don't want to do any more? Because you get three timed laps now. So now only three? Only three and time we, laps. We take the, the best the one. The best one. It's okay. You okay? Yeah? yeah? Fuck it. Ready. Let's fucking do it then. He doesn't give a shit. Let's go. I gotta say, this guy does not give a damn. Heavy break it down into turn what actually heard the pedal squeak there. Not usual of an F1 car or an F2 car. Oh, and again. It sounds like you're stepping on a dog or something. <laughs> the TV Wait, is the TV was <laughs> How do the pedals feel? I feel okay? It's okay, I mean, if I have this in the F1 car, I would not be really confident, but... It probably can't feel much different to the Alfa Romeo, surely. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> it's looking severely quick now as Teo Porsche F2 world champion of 2023 comes around the last turn of the pit stop fastest lap round Austria. What can he do? There he goes. Woo! Break the team. <laughs> I would really just like to say as well before we give a time. Look at that. He hasn't gone over track limits. Pretty much yep. everyone else. That's pretty limits. good. Three clean laps. That's really good. Ollie Caldwell was in the gravel pretty much every lap. Ollie no. Caldwell didn't even come on. Oh yeah, he didn't, did he? <laughs> Brad Benavides <laughs> was in the gravel quite a lot. I'm feeling the pressure. Yeah, you look a bit nervous, man. Yeah, yeah, I won't yeah. lie. I told, when I told you when I said this is serious, I won't lie. I, uh, I took it very, very seriously. Teo Porsche, F2 world champion. Where do you think you've come on arguably a more competitive leaderboard than the season that you had? Where do you think you may have come? I hope, as I said, in the, in the 105. So a little bit in front of uh, Felipe Drogovic. But I don't know. Actually, it's really close. So, so you want you want to come top four? Is what you're saying? That's, the, a, that's the, a stretch. The, the, the goal the goal is to be first, to be P1 every time. I've got to say, mate, Oscar. I mean, he's an F1 driver. Yeah. He's quick, you know. So that's it's, it's understandable. Exactly. Pietro, he spends his life in the sim, so he's really good on the sim. He's really good. Yeah. Brad was a bit of a shocker. We, we had no idea that was going to happen. But you've got some stiff competition, mate. Felipe, a great driver. You have beaten the F3 world champion, Gabby Bortoletto. So that's good already. That's that's pretty good. It's okay. Now, okay. Matt Gallagher. Do you know Matt Gallagher from yeah, P1? Yeah, sure. Yeah, he lives in the sim. He, he, like, he, every he day. Yeah. Every day. And you've beaten Matt Gallagher. Okay. Now we're starting to get into some different territory here. And these are all racing drivers now. Correa 106, you've beaten him. Okay. You've also beaten Felipe Drogovic. Okay, good. So, <laughs> so that's we, we're good. From now we're good. It's so only, we're looking uh, at the top four. It's only positive for now. Not only did you ruin his race in Jeddah, <laughs> you've also beat him on the pit stop fastest lap. You've just beaten Oli Bear. Thank you, thank you very much. So you're much. now in the top three. <laughs> thank you very much. Tayo Porsche, you did the pit stop fastest lap in a one o five point. Two, four, four! You are the winner of the pit stop fastest lap! Yay! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Fucking on the board, it won't stick! Woo! I'm surprised. You've done it. I'm surprised. By a country mile. A country mile. By two tenths. Guys, guys, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Because I tried to, to stay in the in the track limits to be clean. As I said, I'm not doing this at home. I, I play Call of Duty, so if you want to play Call of Duty, next time we do a Call of Duty <laughs> tournament. Yeah, <right? laughs> yeah, let's do that. Instead. <laughs> no, but uh, okay, good. Mate, mega. mega. I'm mega. super. Top of the pistol, fastest lap, and former two champions. Yeah. That was good. I mean, you don't get better than you don't need to even need to get into F1 now, mate. That's that's it. <laughs> I'm done. here. I'm P1 here. <laughs> that's what matters. I can't believe that, mate. What a fucking lap. Amazing. That's good. And that was the last one, no? Yeah. Yeah, hey, I knew. One was good. I knew. <laughs> turn one was good. When turn one in Austria is good, it's, it, and to be honest, that, that's true. In reality, when you do turn one well, you know that you know you know that you are going to fight for pole. Mate, what an epic drive! I honestly, I'll be deadly serious with you. I don't doubt your skills at all. You've just won F two, but 
like I say, Pietro's always in the sim and he set a blinder of a lap. He beat everyone by a lot and you've just gone and done him by two tenths. We didn't think anyone would beat Pietro because he plays the F1 game all the time. He streams it. To be, to be honest, I'm, I'm also shocked. <laughs> I'm shocked because, yeah, I know, I know uh, Enzo and, Pet and uh, Pietro, they uh, drive a lot uh, yeah. the simulator. Mm. And uh, yeah, but it's good. It's good. I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed it. It's, it was fun. So. Good man. Cool. Well, mate, thanks for coming on the pod. Thank it's you been a much. pleasure having you here. I mean, obviously you've flown in, you're flying straight out. So really appreciate yeah, you coming thank on. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much. I enjoyed a lot. As I said, you know, uh, first podcast and I do the fastest lap mm -hmm. and I had a hot chocolate with a croissant. So <laughs> for me, you know, it's only positives this morning. So, good. Um, so thank you very much. Nice. What's great. Is there anything else you want to say? Anything else you want to plug? Anything you got coming up that you want the people to know? Uh, just a big thank you to, to everybody that... Uh, follows me i mean it means a lot to me i know i, I have a lot of uh, uh, people that support me on the social media i can see it so you know even a small message of support uh, for racing drivers for for me it means a lot it means a lot i'm super happy i don't respond to to everybody on on social media unfortunately but it's uh, i can see the messages and it means a lot to me uh, it's that little you know plus to to have the extra performance and to be happy nice. so you know big thank you to to everyone and uh hopefully i can uh, get to f1 nice soon go. and uh yeah that's my dream so yeah. we're hoping we're hoping the best for you mate we really are thank and you. one more question as well if you weren't doing racing what do you think you'd be doing <laughs> that's that's a good one i think um i love sports in general um so i would probably do a job in the I don't know, like uh, either another sport, like uh, I love basketball. I love yeah. uh, playing basketball. I'm not amazing at it, but <laughs> you got <laughs> the height. <laughs> exactly. I got I got the height. It's OK. Uh, I, I mean, I'm a small basketball player, but it's yeah. OK. <laughs> I could be. And uh, yeah, you know, just I don't know. I enjoy a lot like uh, going to the gym. Uh, I don't know, jobs like yeah, in, in the sport uh, industry. So cool. I love it. And uh, yeah. Can I just say, you're like the happiest, smiliest person I think we've ever had on the show. <laughs> sure, sure. And yeah. I saw it in interviews before you come on. Like, there's sure. one interview where you'd like crashed or something, and you meant you should be annoyed, but you're sure. like, you can tell you're a bit annoyed, but you're like, yeah, no, it's, I'm really annoyed. I hate I'm it, really man. upset about this. I'm like, oh my God, this guy <laughs> is just smiling all the time. True. Yeah, I mean, it's it, good. It's good. It's, it's, it's infectious. It's it makes it, you want to smile as well. Sure. I mean, of course, sometimes uh, I, I'm hungry and I don't know in some, I don't know if there is something wrong that happens in my life or I don't know, but I try to smile. I try to smile. It's important, you know, mm. try to, to enjoy uh, every moment. And, you know, I'm doing this sports. It's an amazing sport. I have, a, I have to be honest, I have a, an amazing life. For sure, it's, it's not easy sometimes. There is like uh, ups and downs. It's really tough. There is some really tough moments. And to get to the highest level, to Formula One, it, it's a lot of sacrifices from my family, but also from me. But you know, in the in the end, the the, jo the journey is incredible. You know, I, I enjoy a lot, and uh, it's amazing memories. So I try to smile. I enjoy. You know, it's it's great. Good man, that's the best way to be. I love that, mate. Thanks for coming on. Uh, this was like our Christmas special, basically. It's our last guest episode, pretty much before. Yeah, last episode of the year. The year's it's up. Good. From our side, 2023 has been a mad season. You know, we're just blessed to be to be doing this and have people like you fucking fly out to just come do it's this amazing, it's, yeah. it's crazy I appreciate you coming mate and I wish you all the best in Super Formula Thank you. I hope to see you in that F1 seat at some point and yeah we'll be following your career throughout Super Formula and we yeah. do hope to get you in F1 hopefully Thank we'll you. see it at some point thank you so much for coming on the show mate safe travels to Paris have a lovely time in France uh, Merry Christmas <laughs> or should I say Joyeux Noël Joyeux Noël Joyeux Noël Bonne année Bonne année Happy New Year Parlez-vous anglais? Oui. Oui? 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 Oh, well, no? Well, I don't know what the fuck you just said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, bonne année. Bonne said, année. Bonne année. What it does that mean? Happy New Year. Oh, oh. bonne année. Bonne année. Bonne année. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching Pit Stop. We'll be back next year with many more guests. Please give us a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. All of Teo's links will be down below. Go and give him a follow. And yeah, Teo, thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Cool. Top of the leaderboard, F2 Top of the leaderboard. Let's go, yeah, let's bro. Go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Amazing.